Bullock is going to here. We have eleven spring. There you go, you're on. Okay, thanks. Um, our next speaker will be Jacob Kruzik uh, talking about uh, Perm on a toolbox for Thank you, thank you for the introduction. Um, the Vermont, uh, we are kind of reduced in numbers right now, <coughs> but uh, former contributors are here. Uh, Václav will actually have a talk tomorrow, I think. Uh, the Vermont uh, is a collection of C libraries uh, that uh, is based on uh, Petsy and uh, the main module of Permon is Permon QP, uh, which is used uh, for solution of quadratic problems. Uh, based on this module, we have uh, some others. Uh, these are Permon Clock, uh, which implements FETI type uh, domain decomposition method, and uh, Permon SVM uh, for support vector machines. Uh, these are all published under open source license and available on GitHub. So what are quadratic programming problems? Uh, essentially, uh, there's many applications where quadratic programming arises. Uh, we are most uh, used to like uh, problems in mechanics. Uh, nowadays, we are starting with these support vector machines. But basically, uh, you have a, a quadratic uh, function uh, with some constraints uh, that you try to minimize. And uh, in Paramount QP, you can specify this quadratic function in so-called uh, so QP uh, object. Uh, the uh, programming style is very similar to Patsy. So you just create the object, set the operator, set constraints. Uh, then we have something called QP transformation that uh, I will mention later. And uh, we have solver uh, object, QP solve. Uh, you essentially create it, uh, set a QP to it, and then you can solve it. Uh, the available solvers are uh, essentially anything that's in PC. So KSP uh, and PC objects, you can use anything uh, for unconstrained minimization. Uh, then we have a small set type solver uh, that's uh, uh, augmented Lagrangian approach for uh, enforcing equality constraints. Uh, then we have a bunch of solvers for uh, box constraint problems, uh, which includes also uh, Tau. Uh, so I mentioned uh, the QP transformations. Uh, this is a key concept of Fermon QP. Uh, it's a uh, user specified a, a QP object, uh, and now uh, the QP object actually is too hard to solve. So what we do is we use a QP transformation to transform it into another QP that's simpler to solve. Uh, the transformation also injects a reconstruction function, uh, and when you do a bunch of these uh, transformations, you should arrive at something uh, some simpler uh, QP that you can actually solve. Uh, when you solve it, you use the reconstruction function to get back to this, this chain to uh, obtain the solution to the original problem. So some of the uh, transformations that are available are listed here. Uh, the most important is the uh, dualization. Uh, generally, dualization will give you uh, well, a smaller problem uh, that uh, is better conditioned and uh, quite often has uh, simpler constraints. Uh, so actually, this can be nicely illustrated, uh, the QP transformation on uh, FETI. So I will talk a bit about Parmon plot now. Uh, the FETI methods are uh, domain time decomposition methods. You have a domain that you uh, essentially tear into a number of subdomains, and then you introduce Lagrange multipliers to enforce the continuity across the subdomains interfaces. Uh, the total FETI uh, does also, uh, it, it tears away the Dirichlet bandwidth conditions, 
and enforce them again by Lagrange multipliers so that all the, the subdomains are floating. It's kind of easier to implement. Uh, the basic formulation is uh, you have uh, the stiffness matrices uh, in decomposed form, uh, the associated kernels, uh, and load vector. Uh, then you have a primal problem uh, that uh, the B is uh, a matrix that describes the connectivity of the subdomains. So you uh, connecting this U with this U, for example. Uh, and uh, the BI here, uh, that's an inequality constraint that describes, for example, non-penetrating conditions for contact problems. Uh, the notation for uh, PET is uh, relatively standard. You have uh, an F that's uh, BK plus B transpose, where the K plus is some generalized inverse. Uh, and uh, what you do is you create a dual formulation. Uh, you can see that you know, uh, this inequality constraint was transformed into a simple uh, constraint, uh, only, only uh, a bound. Uh, what you do next is you split the solution to effectively homogenize uh, the equality constraint. And then you can uh, introduce the projectors onto natural core space uh, was talked about it uh, today, uh, which uh, improves the conditioning of the operator. And you still have to enforce the equality constraints, in this case by penalty, there's another trait, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the problem here is that uh, this uh, inverse here, uh, so-called course problem, uh, it gets uh, relatively hard to solve. It's, it's small. It's like uh, in, in 3D, it's generally six times number of subdomains. But uh, if you've got thousands of uh, cores employed in, in the computation, then this is, you, you have to somewhat you know, solve the course problem. It's, it's the main bottleneck of the method. So what you can do is well, if you have, if your K plus is actually a Moore Penrose inverse, then you don't have to use those uh, projectors. In fact, if you construct the F from the KMP instead of K plus, then uh, you get better spectral properties without using the projectors. So you can uh, essentially uh, avoid some of the course problems. Uh, how you get it? Well, that's pretty simple because if you have the uh, matrix representing the kernel, then you just uh, can project uh, the K plus onto image of K. So that's about it. And uh, well, permaflop does exactly this. Uh, you know, uh, if you provide it with stiffness matrix, load vector. Uh, then you can, you can specify the B matrix or just L2G mapping. If your stiffness matrix is in Matisse format, then you don't even have to specify L2G. Uh, you can specify kernel of stiffness matrices or we can compute it using MUMPS. Uh, okay. And what actually uh, FLOP does is it only applies the proper chain of, of transformations uh, basically just dualization, homogenization of equality constraints. Essentially the things I was talking in the uh, derivation of FETI. Uh, so it, it's kind of, in, uh, in some cases it's very natural to describe uh, a mathematical method using some QP transformations. Uh, so if you'd like to try it, it's, it's pretty easy. If you have a working installation of Betsy, you just download it uh, set, set Permon there to, to the root there of, of the source code and call make. That's it. We inherit all the options uh, from Patsy. Uh, and if you want to use the flop, uh, the easiest way is to, if you have code that generates Matis, you just need to include Permon KSP, change Patsy initialize and per, uh, Patsy finalize to Permon initialize, Permon finalize. And uh, you just then specify the SP type as FETI, and you are using FETI for solution of your problem. Um, 
So this is some simple example. Uh, a, uh, a cube that uh, has, uh, uh, has here uh, some uh, constraint, uh, some, uh, uh, some boundary condition that can go behind it. So, uh, and here are uh, some, uh, some results with flop. Uh, the thing is that if you uh, doing peak scaling and uh, you are increasing uh, essentially the resolution of the domain, you are also increasing the uh, the number of uh, unknowns that are in contact uh, with, the, with the constraint here. Uh, so uh, it doesn't scale uh, numerically, uh, but it's very pretty good actually. Uh, and here is uh, timing uh, and comparison with TFETI and PLS method. Uh, you can get much better scaling with PLS. Um, and now, uh, the another application I would like to describe is uh, Thermal SVM. Uh, that's uh, for support vector machines, which is a learning method uh, in machine learning that uh, essentially is used for dividing data set into uh, two categories. Uh, and you need some training sets to, to learn the, the model on it. So basically what you do is, uh, you, have, you have a data set uh, that uh, uh, assigns uh, some vectors to, to categories uh, based on the values, values in the vectors. And what you do is create, uh, you want to find a hyperplane that best separates these two cases. Uh, probably best is the picture. Uh, so you want to find this hyperplane that maximizes the margin. The margin is two divided by the norm of W, where the W is normal of the, uh, of the hyperplane. So uh, obviously this would be the formulation. You have to enforce that the uh, that the uh, vectors are on the on the right side of the hyperplane, uh, but if you don't have uh, separability, uh, you can't you can separate uh, the training set with with hyperplane. So what you do is uh, you allow some errors, uh, and basically what you get is some QP formulation. Uh, so Permon SVM can solve this formulation, uh, actually can solve the bias formulation, which was this one, and no bias formulation. Uh, it has some other features, uh, some interesting one is, for example, it can monitor uh, various, uh, various metrics uh, for support vector machines that tells you how good the model is. Uh, here's an example of that. Uh, and uh, there is some scaling on, on neural data set. Uh, and uh, the Paramount was also used in some real world applications. Uh, this include, uh, for example, detecting brittle and ductile fractures. Uh, this is some uh, metal uh, block that was uh, broken by the weight test and uh, you can use support vector machines to, to find out which, uh, what, what fractures are brittle, which, uh, what uh, fractures are ductile. Uh, another application was by our former colleague Lukas Bospichel now at uh, USI, uh, which is a denoising time series uh, in economics. Uh, they have various uh, time series from uh, various problems. Uh, they have, but they have lots of noise, so they need to, uh, you know, to, to find something from this, you, they have to denoise it. So uh, here's actually an example in pictures that you can find a logo of the university here. Uh, so you can use uh, Permon in uh, real world applications. Uh, and what I'd like you to take from this is uh, that if you are familiar with Patsy and you have some a QP problem that you want to solve or fatty SVM, whatever. Uh, 
it should be very easy to use uh, Vermont. So that's one thing. And uh, but in the future, we would like to uh, finish an implementation of something we call QP constraints uh, that would allow us uh, using like uh, corny constraints and, and stuff like this. And well, I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions. Well, thank you. Well, it's not really an issue here because um, I'm just going to stop this. <laughs>